This is the paper written by the first winner of Nobel Prize in Economics, Ragnar Frisch, 1969. This paper, Partial Time Regressions as Compared with Individual Trends, was on Econometrica 1933, written by Frisch and Waugh. Introduction. There are, in common use, two methods of handling linear trend in correlation analysis of time series data. First, to base the analysis on deviations from trends fitted separately to each original series. And second, to base the analysis on the original series without trend elim elimination, but instead to introduce time itself as one of the variables in multiple correlation analysis. The first method may be called the individual trend method and the latter, the partial time regression method. There are certain misconceptions about the relative value of the two methods, about the kinds of statistical results that are obtained by the two methods. The following simple example is, illustrates the situation. Suppose we are studying the relation of sugar consumption to sugar prices. We have data representing total annual consumption and price for several consecutive years. There may be a strong upward trend in consumption due to population increase or to some other factor that changes or shifts the demand curve. If we want to study only the relation of consumption to price, Naturally, we must eliminate the trend from the consumption before using the data to measure demand elasticity. But suppose that during the period studied, there has been a persistent tendency in sugar prices to decline and that this has caused a long time increase in consumption. This fact may be just what we want to express when we speak of the relation of sugar consumption to price. This long-time connection between consumption and price may be even more important for our problem than the short-time connection. If so, we must not, of course, eliminate trends from the variables before proceeding to the analysis. On the contrary, in this case, the trend variation in price and the trend variation in consumption must be left in the material and should be allowed to influence the regression coefficient between consumption and price. A common idea seems to be that this can be obtained by using the partial time regression method instead of the individual trend method. This is false. The possibility of determining the long time relation considered in the above example does not depend on which of the two methods is used, but on a certain criterion regarding the variability type of the material at hand. The criterion is discussed below. The partial trend regression method can never indeed achieve anything which the individual trend method cannot, because the two methods lead, by definition, to identically the same result. They differ only in the technique or computation used in order to arrive at the results. This illustrates one of several misconceptions that exist in this, in this field. But there are only others. The various misunderstanding may be briefly classified into the following three points. One, the significance of the regression coefficients as determined by the two methods. In particular, there exists a misconception as to the meaning of these coefficients as approximations to the underlying true relationship between the variables. The significance of the correlation coefficients as determined by the two methods. The three, um, the significance of the trends. This last question is of particular interest from the point of view of forecasting. 
Before proceeding to a more systematic discussion of these points, we shall, by quotations from well-known statisticians, illustrate the nature of the understand, uh, misunderstanding. Quotations. The following are excerpts from an article by Bradford Smith, The Error of Eliminating Secular Trends and Seasonal Variations Before correlation, Correlating Time Series. In the Journal of American Statistical Association, December 1925, he says, Should these two series depend, dependent and independent chance to have approximately similar trend or seasonal movement, and should these latter be extracted from the two series prior to their correlation, one might, under, uh, one might, under the name of seasonal and trend, extract much of the variation by which the two were related, and thus obscure the true relationship. The unconsidered practice of eliminating trend and seasonal from series prior to their correlation is to be looked upon uh, askance for, uh, forever. Uh, no, no, askance, therefore, this is, it is often a series error serious error. The escape from this predicament involves no new theoretical consideration. All that is necessary to remember that fundamentally a numerical description of passage of time is merely taken to represent the magnitude of the combined effect of otherwise unmeasured factors. And then this series of magnitudes is treated precisely as any other independent factor. In Bradford Smith's paper, time is treated as a factor in a multiple regression equation and partial coefficients of regression are obtained to indicate the relation of the dependent variable to this trend and to the other factors. In following this practice, as often occurs, Proper methods go hand in hand with better results. On theoretical considerations, correlation coefficients secured by simultaneous or multiple correlation methods will be as high or higher and never less than those resulting from any possible sequence of consecutive elimination of the influence of the independent factors from the dependent of which current methods of eliminating seasonal variations before correlating are an example. An actual trial of the two methods, the writer has found that the simultaneous solution of trend and seasonal regression curves and curves for other factors always give markedly higher correlations. Mordecai Ezekiel, in his book, Price Voraus uh, by Landwirtschaft Lichen Erzeugnissen Nissen, published in the series of Frankfurter Gesellschaft für Konjunkturforschung, 1930, says, page 23, oft wird ist, is not wenn sein, den zusammengesetzten, gesetzten, zusammengesetzten Einfluss dieser Kräfte, die mit dem Kalde, Kalender variieren, variieren zu messen. Allerdings ohne dass man dabei der stets vorhandenen Gefahr und äh, unterliegen darf den Einfluss von zeitlich variablen Faktoren, Veränder, äh, Veränderungen zu, zu schreiben, schreiben, die in, äh, die in Wirklichkeit auf andere Ursachen zurück zerführen sind. Aus dieser Gründe wird der Einfluss der zeitlich 
verhinder verhinderen Faktoren am besten. Am besten durch eine Bestimmung. Bestimmung des Trends in der Relation und Relation und nicht durch nicht durch Feststellung, Feststellung, Feststellung desselben bei jedem einzelnen, einzelnen Faktor gewesen. gewesen. Three. What is the true relationship? Proceeding now to a more exact statement of the problem. We must first consider the meaning of a true relationship and in what sense such a true relationship can be approximated by various empirical methods. When comparing the results of different methods in time series analysis, one must keep clearly in mind the object of the analysis. It must be specified which sort of influence it is desired to eliminate and which sort to preserve. Unless this is specified, it has no meaning to say that a certain method will yield a truer relation, a relationship than another. Such an expression has a meaning only if it is preferred to a given theoretical framework. An empirically determined relation is true if it approximates fairly well a certain well-defined theoretical relationship assumed to represent the nature of the phenomenon studied. There does not seem to be any other way of giving a meaning to the expression, a true relationship for clearness of statement. We must therefore first define the nature of a a priori relationship that is taken as the idea. Let us express this in mathematical term. We consider a number of variables x0, x1, blah blah blah, xn, the last of them, i.e. xn, denoting time. The con con we conceive a priori of a relation that expresses x0 in terms of the other variables, so for simplicity, the relation is assumed linear. It may be written x0 equals beta 0, 1, 2, all the way up to n times x sub n, 1, plus all the way up to plus beta 0 n times uh, 12, all the way up to n minus 1 of times x sub n where the betas are constants and the variables are measured from their respective means. Each of the constraints in 3.1 is conceived so as to represent an independent influence on x0. For instance, the constant beta 0 n 1 2 and all the way up to n minus 1 represents the independent influence which timely uh, which time may exert directly on x0 regardless of the particular way in which the other variables x1 all the way up to x, x n sub uh, x sub n minus 1 happen to evolve the theory a theoretical relation postulated a priori in this way we may call a structural relation they coefficients beta 0 n 1 to 3 all the way up to n minus 1 in 3.1 equation we may call the partial structural coefficient between x naught and time the rest of the paper you can read in the url that i list below thanks for watching